Okay, real quick, I want to show you an easy DIY project that I've been working on. I made several of these projects for Christmas, gave them out as presents, and word got out. People liked them. People started asking me if I'd make them. I come up with a price, and I've been making them ever since. It's February 19th, so it's only a couple months, but I have made a lot of these things. Now, I call it a torched rustic American flag. It's simply 13 strips of wood put together. You torch every other one, and... This one I caught is, is for firefighters. It has a red line. Uh, this is actually for a friend of my wife's. She's a firefighter, but there is also, she's ordered three like this, and she's also ordered one with a blue line for a police officer. Uh, I've made a lot of blue lines, a lot of red lines. I've also made some gold lines, which is for dispatchers. And uh, the one I'm gonna make today, it does not have a painted line. It's just uh, natural like that. And it's just standard American flag. So like I said, it's a real easy project, nothing hard about it. it. might be something you can do there at your house or at your home. Check it out, see how easy it is. All right, the first thing you need to do is cut the pieces for length. The one I just showed you happens to be uh, 13 inches wide and 24 and a half inches long. The one I'm making today is much bigger. It's 19 and a half inches wide by 37 inches long. Next, I just need to cut them for width. This particular flag takes 13 one and a half inch strips. So I'm gonna rip those on table saw real quick. Okay, I have all 13 strips cut for length and for width, and I went through and picked out the ones that I want in line. Let me show you what I'm talking about. These are all rough cut pretty much. These are furring strips that I bought from a big uh, box store, Lowe's. So they are not perfect. Some of them are cut, some of them are warped. But I want the top seven where the canton or the union is going to be. I want all those to, to join pretty tightly so that the stars will work out right. So I picked them out. This is the way I want them. This will be the bottom. And obviously that's the top. The canton will go right here. My next step is to get out the torch and torch every other strip. I always torch it before I put them together. It's, it's easier to control where you're burning that way. I use this torch here. I got this torch from Tractor Supply. It's uh, very simple to use. It has an igniter here. You turn the, the gas on here and it uses a simple propane bottle. So let's get to burning. Okay, now that every other one is torched, I want to go ahead and torch the union. That way I can go ahead and dremel out the stars after I put it together. Okay, the union is going to be right here in this section. It covers seven strips or seven stripes. So I've made a template with the stars, and this is 10 and a half by 13 and a quarter. I could cut some down off the edge here and make it a little smaller, but this is the size I have come up with. Obviously, these four here are burned, so I'm going to take these three, I'm going to keep them in order, and I'm just simply going to put them together and mark it. I could get a tape measure, but I always just get my template out. To get this perfect line, it's, it's hard to get up there with a torch because you're definitely going to burn past it. The way I take care of that is I put a little block here. Simply put it just past the line and you can burn right up to the line. Cut the torch down very low and burn that right up to the line.
Okay, that will be where the union is at. Now, like I said, I always keep this in order. All right, that's pretty much what it's gonna look like. Okay, now it's time to put it together and I'm gonna put it together with the strips that were left over after ripping these pieces. I put four strips on the back, staple it and glue it, and it, it'll be good to go. Okay, I've moved the flag to my workbench. I've turned it over, upside down, face down, so that I can put these strips on the back here. Now, I tighten this up with a clamp. I know a lot of people use a piece of plywood. They'll glue it to a piece of plywood. I did that from a very first one, and it was really, really heavy. Uh, even though the plywood was some, somewhat thin, it was still really heavy. So I get the clamp in place, and I simply get out some glue. And I use Titan Bond, Ultimate Wood Gluing Glue. And I use a stapler and I staple each strip. So I put uh, 13 staples in here and I'll tighten it down. You can see it's trying to buckle on me, so I'll get it kind of tight. Go ahead and staple these first few. Should be able to tighten that up a little more. And you do not have to wait for the glue to dry to take this loose. glue does dry fairly quickly and I simply put this usually a square here on the bench to, to get it all started all right, I'll tighten these down a little bit do the same thing over here Next step is just tap it down. Make sure they're all seated good. And that causes the glue to come out a little more. Okay, the flag's dry now. I didn't have to wait on it to dry to start the stars, but I didn't want to get glue all over myself. So it's all dried up, I'm good to go. I'm gonna use the template, trace around the stars, and go ahead and get started with that and dremel those things out. So basically all I'm doing is cutting through the scorch part, exposing the fresh wood underneath, and it just kind of allows the, the stars to pop out there against the black. One thing you always want to be sure of is if you make a template mark top on one side and that would be the, the top uh, 
of the star there, the point, goes up. The very first flag I made, I wasn't paying attention. I did it like that. And as you see, the stars are just upside down. So I wrote top there. Clamp that so it doesn't move. Okay, I've already traced out all the stars. And this probably is not the easiest way. It's the easiest uh, way that I have so far found. And I'm just gonna blow this little bit of stuff off. And you can see, I mean, you can see them pretty good even though it's uh, using a pencil going over this dark stuff. You can still see the stars. And I just trace around those with the uh, Dremel tool. cleaned up a little bit, take all the, the grunge off of it, but then I'm going to take the torch and antique it a little bit. First thing I want to do, just get this black dirt or the char off of this part, just the dirt, sand it a little bit, just to loosen it up. Then blow it off. these pieces just so they're not really noticeable it doesn't stick out stand out now, real bright. Now I'm just going to antique it here on the front to kind of take the brightness off these. I always go back over the stars just to kind of antique them a little bit.
some thicker grain, I'll follow it. No really perfect way to do it. There is the finished product as far as burning it and putting it together. Now I use a clear satin enamel. It uh, dries really fast. I put one thin coat on it because if you don't, this charred part will, as people touch it or carry it or handle it, it will smear. Um, it just kind of gets all over everything. You put one little coat of this on it, it kind of covers it all, takes care of it. Anytime I make a flag, I like to sign the back of it, and here's how I do that. First thing I do is find a decent spot, and I torch it here on the back, probably right here in the center, just a round spot. Once I torch it, I go ahead and sign it with my Dremel tool. I'll spray one little shot of clear on that. Keep that from smearing. Just my initials, the year, and the number of the flag. The flag's all finished and ready to go. Uh, a couple things to remember. One coat of the, the clear coat, just a satin, a clear finish, it will keep this stuff from smudging. Uh, don't worry about having the stars perfect. Uh, it's rustic, it's antique, it's, it, it kind of goes along with it. Um, so that they look just fine. Uh, another thing, if, if you use uh, strips on the back instead of plywood, it's quite a bit lighter. So uh, you, can, uh, you can make these things any size you want to. A couple things you may want to know is, uh, based on my research when I started making these things, that I found um, I've, a lot of flags kind of look kind of square to me. The union should be two-fifths the length of the flag. So uh, uh, the union two-fifths the length and also it's going to be seven thirteenths, which is uh, there's thirteen stripes. It takes up seven stripes. So, uh, at any rate, uh, what I'll do now is put uh, a screw here, about six inches down on both sides, hang a wire or put a wire on it for hanging. And this particular flag is going to be donated to my church. The uh, they're having a women's retreat uh, here the first of March, and they need some door prizes. And uh, I decided to make one of these to donate to the church. So. That's where this one's going. This may be something you can do. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Uh, put them in the comment section. I'll be glad to respond to everybody I possibly can. 
and help you in any way I possibly can. I uh, hope you liked the video. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a great day.